Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Top Hat Gaming Man here, the most dashing and daring, courageous and caring retro gaming influencer in all of cyberspace. Yeah. Recently on this channel, we have been looking at the story and history of a wide range of game consoles that never went on to live up to consumer expectations. These platforms all failed for a variety of different reasons, but as inadequate as these pieces of half assed hardware may be, each bring its own unique piece of gaming history to the table. On this channel, I plan to continue to highlight and celebrate that fact. Over the last month on here, we have spent a fair bit of time looking at systems that saw a release in Japan in 1983. In many ways, this was the year the console boom essentially started in that country, with the rise of both the Nintendo Famicom and Sega SG-1000. Whilst Nintendo and Sega are both well celebrated, it is of note that a number of other companies released consoles in Japan that year too. This month we have already mentioned the Epoch Super Cassette Vision, Atari 2800 and Casio PV1000. But there were even more platforms released that year than even these. Today we are going to look at a system that is even more obscure than those of which I have already just listed off. This ladies and gentlemen is the story of the Gakken Compact Vision TV Boy. Yeah. So, to start the story of this Gakken product, we are once again back in 1983. The world of gaming was very different back then, and each country's gaming market was tending to still behave very differently from one another. As we all know, in the USA, the industry was cooling off after being dominated for six years by the now very tired, very dated Atari VCS. In my home country of the United Kingdom on the other hand, the industry was booming, with the war between the ZX Spectrum and the Commodore 64 already being in full swing, with a plethora of bedroom game coders popping up in every corner. As highlighted, 1983 was also an interesting year for Japan, as the Nintendo Famicom, along with its range of colourful competitors, offered the nation a more diverse gaming culture than ever before. I am slowly highlighting this menagerie of platforms, but this time it's the Gakken Compact Vision TV Boy's turn, which I have to say may be the biggest mouthful of a name I have heard for any console yet, which I have covered on here. Before we move on to talking about the system itself and its entry into the Japanese console wars, let's focus a bit on Gakken itself, as it was certainly not a company I was familiar with until I encountered this platform. Gakken Company Limited is a Japanese publishing company that was founded all the way back in 1947. It is of note that this was only a couple of years removed from Japan's surrender after World War II, and it may surprise some that such successes for businesses were even possible so early on, particularly when you take into account that the country was occupied by the Allies right up until 1952. Although the country was under occupation, luckily for Japan, the Soviet Union were allowed little to no influence over the country, allowing in some ways for capitalism and opportunities to free flow a little more easily. During this national reform, Japan adopted a parliamentary based political system, while the emperor changed to no more than a symbolic status. The change in this time period was largely spearheaded by United States General of the Army Douglas MacArthur, who prompted the revision of the Japanese constitution and their demilitarization. Moving on from World War II, as we all know, Japan went on to become an economic global powerhouse. But rather than explaining this myself, this direct quote from General MacArthur puts it perfectly. In regards to Japan's success, he states that the Japanese people since the war have undergone the greatest reformation recorded in modern history. With a commendable will, eagerness to learn and marked capacity to understand, they have from the ashes, left in war's wake, erected in Japan an edifice dedicated to the supremacy of individual liberty and personal dignity. 
and in the ensuring process there have been created a truly representative government committed to the advance of political morality, freedom of economic enterprise and social justice. Politically, economically and socially, Japan is now abreast of many free nations of the earth and will not again foul the universal trust. In 1946, a gentleman known as Hideto Furioka founded Gakushu Kenkyusha with the conviction that education is the key to Japan's post-war reconstruction and by March of 1947, the company was reorganised and incorporated as Gakken Company Limited. That same year, direct distribution began and educational products were sold with a direct-to-school sales system initiated. By the time the 1960s rolled around, a large headquarters was established in Tokyo and the company opened a subsidiary known as Ripu Shobo Publishing Company Limited, which was used to handle publishing educational material. The 1970s was a key period for Gakken as they began to shift their focus away from schools and target the general consumer market with a range of educational products. Gakken's greatest success came with a product known as Denshi Blocks, which are small plastic boxes containing electronic components. These blocks were used within educational electronic kits to allow experiments to be performed safely by children. This series of kits was known as the Gakken EX System Series. When using these kits, users would place the blocks side by side, allowing their metal strips to touch so that a current could flow through them. This range of products was a huge success and it was so popular that it was reissued once again in 2002, over 25 years after its original release. So, with Gakken shifting gears from educational products for schools, to educational products for the home, to electronic educational products for the home, by the time the 1980s rolled around, it was time for Gakken to begin releasing electronic recreational products for the home, on this occasion in the form of video games. In 1981, Gakken would begin releasing tabletop LCD games. The most notable title they created was a simple ripoff of Pac-Man known as Super Puck Monster that was initially first sold exclusively in Japan. Interestingly, shortly after this, Coleco would actually end up officially licensing Gakken's creation and would end up repackaging and selling the product as an official Pac-Man LCD game. So once again, Gakken's dabbling in electronics was another huge success for the company. So after Gakken had this small taste of the gaming pie, they decided that they wanted to jump in that little bit deeper. And by 1983, the company would release its own fully fledged game console, the Compact Vision TV Boy. Moving back to a previous video on this channel, I mentioned that prior to 1983, the Japanese console market was dominated by the Epoch Cassette Vision, a system which was largely credited for its success due to its low cost at purchase. So, with this in mind, Gakken were looking to directly emulate Epoch success by creating another cheap low-end game console that would encourage thrifty consumers to part with their cash. The product that would hit the market as you can see, is a bizarre looking system. The platform features a large handle placed at its left, which to me makes it resemble a 1980s landline phone. The system does not feature its own controller, and instead all the controls are located on the system itself. The start button is located on the strange handle, and a large T-shaped control stick is located on the right. The T-shaped stick also features a fire button placed on the left side of it. All in all, no one can complain that the Gakken system isn't unique looking. The console houses a Motorola MC6847 video processor, 2KB of RAM, but reportedly the system does not feature a built-in CPU, and instead every cartridge features its own ROM, RAM and CPU. So, with this system's obscurity, it is clear to all that it probably did not sell all that well. But what was it exactly that would spell doom for Gakan in the console market? Let's take a look. Firstly, and most obviously, by the time the Compact Vision TV Boy hit the market, the Famicom had already been wowing consumers for a few months. And even though the Famicom was 14,800 yen, Gakan's product was only 8,800 yen. 
the Famicom offered enough advantages for consumers to go with the Nintendo product instead. Amusingly, even if you were financially very tight and did not feel like paying that extra money for Nintendo's product, the Compact Vision TV Boy was still not the product on the market for you, as you could have simply opted for the new Epoch Cassette Vision Junior instead, which launched at a mere 5,000 yen, and that system already had an established library of games. Now that's a bargain, ladies and gentlemen. So, almost instantly, Gakken's system had no niche. It was neither the cheapest, nor was it the most sophisticated system, making it pretty pointless to the people of 1983. If you, for reasons though, did happen to be different to everyone else, and thought of yourself as somewhat of a Japanese hipster, what sort of games could you purchase and play on the Gakken product? Well, throughout the system's life cycle, the Compact Vision TV Boy received a huge library of six different cartridge-based games, offering consumers a huge choice base between Excite Invaders, Mr. Bomb, Robotum Wars, Frogger, Urban War 200X, and Super Cobra. They need to calm down! As expected with a budget system from 1983, graphically, none of these titles set the world on fire and feature colour palettes smaller than games that could be played on the ZX Spectrum. The games look more like they are from the Atari age, rather than the futuristic post-Famicom year of 1983. All in all, the story of Gakken's entry into the console market is just a further example of a successful company with no experience in console manufacturing, turning up and losing money due to the more thought out plans from savvier, more experienced entities, such as Nintendo and Epoch. With all this in mind, this reduces the Compact Vision TV Boy to no more than a footnote within gaming history. Despite all this, it's good to go back and look at these tales of failure to help us further understand the gaming landscape today. Over the course of history, there has been far more foul consoles than there has been successes and it's always fun to go back and check them out, and look at what the thinking was behind these at one point promising devices. Yeah. Thank you for watching today's video, that was the story of the Compact Vision TV Boy. Which fouled console would you like to see me cover next on here? If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell for videos like this every single week. Finally, my channel Topic Gaming Man is funded by the fantastic support I receive from my amazing Patreon benefactors who continuously go above and beyond to preserve this channel's life. So shout outs to Carl Johnson, Suzuki Kobayashi, JD Robbins, Greg Hooper, C. Bass the Great, Synth Spaces, Kevin Fahaley, Andrew Bzanski, Edward O'Reilly, Tom Elliott, Marcus Hines, Quang DX, SpongeMap B, Michael Baker and all of my other patrons. Thank you all so much!